I'm Dave Aber. And I'm Kristen Lagana. Welcome to Anne Arundel County Week in Review. In this episode, we'll tell you more about the Emergency Preparedness Expo and preview the county fair, but first making headlines this week. The county's official seal could be getting a makeover. On Monday, County Executive Steve Hsu introduced legislation to the county council that includes a redesign of the image we're all so familiar with. The new design makes some subtle improvements on the old design. Most of all, it includes a bright, sharp image that will look much better on county buildings, official documents, and of course, online. The effort began last year because officials noticed that multiple versions of the seal were present all over the place. There were also lots of versions online and the images were very blurry. The new design was created with the help of the Maryland Archives who even found a portrait of Charles Calvert standing with his coronet which is like a crown. I have a coronet, don't you? Doesn't everyone? Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> Charles Calvert was, of course, Anne Arundel's son. Of course. Of course. Everybody knows that. I remember this from fifth grade, don't you? No, I grew up in Rockville. Oh, yeah, that's right. We don't need to talk about that. No. Well, I studied it. The Davidson Elementary. Woo, woo. Nice. Go Gators. Some of the elements added include the felt top of the coronet, a tassel sitting on top of that, and two ornate bands that were missing from the previous design. The seal has not been officially updated in 60 years, even though it has changed by various people along the way. You can take a look at the new design on our website, aacounty.org, or on social media channels. A public hearing on the legislation adopting the new seal will be held on October 4th. Exciting news, Mr. Logo Man. I, yeah, I'm very excited because yeah. this, this took a lot of work and a lot of effort and uh, hopefully people can appreciate the amount of research that went into right. this. Um, to, to have a portrait of Charles Calvert, who is Lord Baltimore, the third Lord Baltimore and the son of Cecil, it's Cecil, and Anne, 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 Anne Arundel um, was very helpful. And so, you know, people might not notice right off the bat, but if you carefully study the different images, you'll see the improvement there. And uh, my favorite was the, the, the large, let's call them baubles on top of the crown. They're just kind of floating out there. And you look at it and you're like, that can't exist in the real universe. The, it can't just float Bottom, by itself. Yeah, huh? Yeah. And, and it occurred to me, it occurred to us as a group, there's supposed to be some felt there. <laughs> so, you know, there's just now some strange... Now it makes all the sense. <laughs> if you look at it closely, it's not going to appear very different. But if you look at it closely, you'll see... It does. It does look a the lot things different. things that And very changed. sharper. Um, very much sharper. My question for you. Yes. Why Charles Calvert and not Anne Arundel? Why Anne Arundel did not have a crown or a coronet. But she's our county. Right, because her husband named the county after her because I'm not, hey, don't look at me like that. I did not create the rules back in 1615 or whatever Just it was. Saying. We're not Charles I, it wasn't Calvert me. County. I know. Anne Arundel. But Anne did not have a crown, and we would have had to dramatically change the, the seal, and nobody wants that. People don't like change all the time, Kristen. But okay. This is just slight changes, so hopefully people will like it. Well, speaking of the county council, we had our first robotic member Ooh. attend a meeting this week. That's right. Yes. Councilman Pete Smith took the dais virtually, appearing remotely from his work assignment for the Marines in Virginia. He looked a little skinny for, for Pete, <laughs> but was able to listen to testimony, interact with his fellow council members, and, of course, vote. Uh, no, I'm actually good. Um, I'll be here for the next 10 weeks, and uh, hopefully I can still participate on the, the, with the council meetings via this uh, device. Now, that was Smith's face on an iPad screen mounted to a Segway, Kristen. Hmm. That's something you just don't see very often. Uh, Johnny Five again. I know, it's kind of cool. Yeah. Smith is on a 10-week assignment, and it looks like there will be more meetings for Robo Pete, as <laughs> we call him. <laughs> Patrick Malone from the county's public school system explained exactly how the setup works. It's a, it's a really clear picture that you see here. Um, we've tested it both on a Wi-Fi signal uh, and a LTE signal. Um, it runs very smoothly and I have full confidence just based on our experiences with Peter um, and the experiences that we're having currently with the other students that are using uh, these robots. Uh, we now have three of them in the county uh, that he'll be able to fully function and be a fully participating member uh, of the council as if he were here. 
How cool is Pete Bot? When can Kristen Bot start going to work Monday through Friday? Now, now people know that we like to do our little skits. I mean, we need to do a skit where we host the show as, as Bot. Dave Bot and Kristen Bot or yeah. Lagana Bot. Gana Bot. Labot. La Bot Gana. Bot. Okay. We'll, we'll, work, we'll work on that. We'll, work on we'll come up with something good. No, it's very exciting, though. It is. It's fun, and uh, they had some fun with it, and they also got work done, so yeah. it worked out That's okay. great. It worked out. Yeah. Well, Annapolis has had so many cool events this year, including the first Sundays that we have highlighted right here on Week in Review. This week, County Executive Steve Hsu and his staff attended Dinner Under the Stars, which has been quite the hit on West Street. The event involves roping off West Street and dressing it up with dinner tables for guests to enjoy Annapolis in a whole new way. Here's what County Executive Shu had to say about dining under the stars. If you've never been, this is a great event. They block off all of Inner West Street and all of the restaurants in the area set up tables here out on West Street for a fabulous dinner. And after dinner, it's music, lots of it, a lot of fun. This is a great way to support local business and have a great time for your family, your friends, your colleagues at work. Anybody's welcome. Hope you can join us next week. You were there, Dave. How was it? It was a little hot. A little hot? A little hot, but um, it's really cool. And if, if pe people haven't checked it out, it's really fun. There's all these things going on. We've talked about this a little bit. There's so much going on Annapolis, in Annapolis with the arts and entertainment scene. It's a hot spot. That you haven't seen before. I mean, it's always been this quaint, historic town. You've yeah. always had the waterfront and the sailboats and all that. But this really adds a different dimension to it. It does. And it's really fun. And there's something about seeing a historic place from a different vantage point that right. is kind of cool. And I think it's also bringing some income to an otherwise dead night. I mean, folks yes, aren't usually good point. going out on Wednesday night. Good point. So, this is a good way to support, support your local yeah, businesses. Yeah, support your local business. And, I think it's really exciting. And, you know, we keep hearing that they're going to keep going. They have the Fringe Festival coming yep. up. We'll be talking about that on the show. And the Chocolate the Festival. The Chocolate Festival. They have all these events. So I think they're going to find a way to get as close to year-round as they can that's, with these things. That's amazing. I was uh, I got to spend some time downtown during my Labor Day uh, festivities. So. Were you laboring? No. Well, as I mentioned on my Facebook page, the only laboring I did was peeling shrimp. Ooh, nice. I was at the boat yard. The boat yard so, bar and grill? Yeah, it was my first time having um, something other than brunch there. Huh. So I got to finally try the um, famously, they're famously known for their fish tacos. So I finally got to try those. Those were delicious. Nice. Had some shrimp. And then we walked and got ice cream from Annapolis Ice Cream Company. Nice. Had nice. a great flavor, by the way. It's something you'd never put together. What's that? Strawberry Oreo. I like that. Yeah, really good. Uh, try the so, pecan pie. I, I will have to. Oh now, God. you guys should have invited me to dinner so you could have had dinner with a star, not Sorry. just under the stars. Sorry, I thought you were booked that night because you were like diva-ing somewhere. <laughs> Isn't that? A diva all the time. <laughs> we're going to take a quick break and Kristen's going to check her vocal cords and when we return, <laughs> we'll talk to Kevin Aftung about the Emergency Preparedness Expo. Take a look at our community calendar for events happening around town and we'll be right back. Patriotism. It inspires passionate debate. It's worn like a badge of honor with good reason. Because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people. To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. 
It should be about love, love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels. Because love has no labels. Welcome back. Joining us on Week in Review this week, we have Kevin Aftung, Director of the County's Office of Emergency Management. Mr. Aftung, welcome back to the show. Well, thank you for having me again. It's always a pleasure to be here. We love having you in the studio. Always get great tips when you're around and, and good stuff about what's coming up in the county. So we want to, of course, start off with how long have you been with OEM? Oh, about eight months now, long eight time. Eight months, yeah, yeah. Yeah, long time or now. Better or now, yeah. And uh, what, what is your role with OEM and what's OEM's role for the county? Well, as the director of emergency management, I'm responsible for all the programs and plans that are associated with emergency management in the county. Um, we do planning, but planning and preparation is our mantra for emergency management. The goal is to have the community, the county government, businesses and citizens and other entities all prepared if we do have an emergency. Um, part of that is getting the word out on a regular basis about what we're doing and how we're doing it. Very good. And what sorts of technology do you use in order to get that word across? Well, we're uh, big into Facebook now. We have a Facebook page. Please like us. Dave loves Facebook. Yes, <laughs> like the OEM page. And um, we have other ways Dave loves of... Facebook. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We have other ways of getting the word out. We do have an emergency alert system here in the county, whereas if there is a significant emergency or a significant event that needs to, the information needs to get out to the citizens, we have the ability to call them reverse-wise and Very us good. call them instead of them call us. So it works out pretty well. That's yeah, code that's red, a, right? Yes, code, code red. Very, very effective tool. Well, we've been wanting to have you on the show because obviously we had the tragedy in Ellicott City and that's been on everyone's mind. And now as the cleanup starts and the rebuilding starts, I think a lot of people are asking themselves, you know, what could this happen to us? And, you know, how did this happen? Why did this happen? Um, can you tell us a little bit about number one, how the county was or wasn't involved in the response? And two, were there any lessons learned that, that we should take from that? Sure. Um, yes, the county was very involved with Howard County in Ellicott City. Uh, emergency management sent five different people there for planning and constituent services. So they were there for several days. Um, the fire service sent an incident management team uh, and also, I believe, some rescue teams uh, to uh, Ellicott City. Uh, additionally, uh, Public Works has supplied some Vactor trucks and, I, and maybe some other equipment that I'm not aware of. But yeah, uh, we were very involved. Uh, Howard County is our neighbor. Um, all of us work together when there's a situation like this. And um, I have close ties to Howard County from another life. And obviously, when I heard about Ellicott City, I wanted to do anything I could to help. So I called their emergency manager and we immediately sent some personnel. So yeah, we were, we were deeply involved with helping them. Um, as far as lessons learned, Ellicott City is kind of a unique place. Um, there's two small, they're called rivers, but there's two small streams that run on either side of Main Street in Ellicott City and they actually have a confluence underneath the road and then go to one side. Um, and what happens is because it's all downhill and the Patapsco River is at the bottom of the hill, all the water from a significant rain event like that drains downhill. In that particular storm, there was over seven inches of rain recorded and at one point during the storm in a 15 minute period, there were over two inches of rain that fell. So yeah, it did create um, uh, quite a disaster, and I'm sure everybody has seen those pictures and those videos. Uh, right. On was it a 2,000-year flood? Is that what they're calling it? Um, the Weather Service was calling it a 1,000-year event, 1, but that you have to be really careful with that. Just because it happened doesn't mean it's going to be another 1,000 years before yeah, right. it does happen. So we need to be vigilant and be prepared for flooding like that. Was there anything about the response itself and from an from an emergency management standpoint that you observed or that you know you were you were briefing your staff on about, you know, maybe we might not have the exact same thing, but when you have to do swift water rescues and things like that, it's kind of a, I'm, I'm guessing you guys take any opportunity you can to sort of use something as a teaching moment, right? Absolutely, anytime you have a situation like that, it's, it's a learning tool for you, and hopefully for all of my staff to learn in the future for what we could do better here. Now, our topography is a little bit different in this county. We don't really have too many areas with the really steep falling hills like that. Um, there's, a, there's a couple of areas in the county that do have low-lying areas with streams where there could be some issues. Uh, the other issue we have mostly is tidal flooding. Um, a lot of the county, over 500 miles of shoreline, and a lot of the county is uh, on peninsulas, I'll call them, little outjuts of land where if there's a significant amount of water, those peninsulas can be cut off. Mm -hmm. It's shocking to me how fast 
the water built up. I yeah. think that that was another thing when you're watching the videos that were taken, just how fast everything kind of floods into those areas. Um, there's a lot of businesses down there that there are issues with flood insurance. Um, what kind of tips can you offer for businesses since we do have a lot of businesses on water about flood insurance? And residents. And residents. Well, th flood insurance is an interesting thing. Um, first of all, if, it, and this is for county residents, if you live in an area where you're in a flood zone, the federal government recently redrew all of the flood maps in the country. If you're in an area where you're in a flood zone, the smartest thing you can do is buy flood insurance. It's not cheap if you're in a flood zone, but it is worth the money. Um, something folks may not know is your homeowner's policy does not cover any kind of flooding whatsoever. Uh, most homeowner's policies don't. So if you have a flooding situation in your home, even if you're not in a flood zone, your homeowner's insurance is not gonna pay for it. And where I'm going with that is it may be worthwhile for folks to investigate their insurance and see if it's not worth getting a flood policy even if you're not in a flood zone. And maybe find out if you're in a flood zone too. Well, the, the, the insurance line. companies certainly have that information and as when they rate you, they, they look and, and check to see if the, the home is in a flood zone. So yeah, that's part of it. Hmm. Um, there is a website, a federal website you can go to and uh, it's worth looking at. It, it explains the National Flood Insurance Program and, and what homeowners can do to take um, to take some action to prevent some flooding from around their home. And of course FEMA. You can just Google FEMA and I'm sure they'll have Absolutely. information as yeah. well. Lots of good info and tips to share for residents and for businesses in the county. Dave, wouldn't it be amazing if there was some sort of event where people could go yes. and get more information about preparedness? What it, do you think only about if that? it has fire trucks. Only trucks should be on site. It has to have fire trucks. Lots of organizations with information for folks to be better prepared. Wouldn't it be great if we had something like that? Yeah, that's a really good idea. We yeah. should look into that. Um, oh, by the way, we did. Um, <laughs> oh, good. And we tomorrow. Do. I think there's something tomorrow. We have a preparedness expo at Marley Station Mall scheduled for tomorrow, September 10th, uh, from 10 until 2, I believe. Um, we will have a variety of organizations there that can answer your questions about flooding, about emergency preparedness. Uh, the fire department will be there with fire engines, police department with police vehicles. Uh, there will be heli a helicopter there, uh, some other big heavy trucks and heavy equipment. Uh, it's an interesting day for the kids and it's a great day for the parents to get information about being prepared. Very good. I love this event because not only do I, I get to go and, and meet with uh, you know, recycling's there, but all these other organizations, Queen it's great recycling. to catch up with all of our other departments and mm -hmm. get good information and share. And, so. and last year, the weather wasn't very good. If it I wasn't, but we correctly. still had a great time. Okay, so this, you're due for this year. The weather's going to be nice. We were prepared at the Preparedness Expo. Yes, you were. You were very prepared. You had your radios, <laughs> your batteries, your, dis your, your disposable, your... Um, we call it the non-perishable food, right. yep. all well, that stuff. Well, as a matter of fact, last year when it did rain, even in the heavy rain, we had over 2,500 people attend wow. the expo. It was a expo. great turnout. That's great. Um, now, we did put it in order for sunshine this year, so hopefully okay. the order has been moved to the top of the list and we will get the sunshine we've requested, Good. which should increase the, the, the fair goers quite a bit. Agreed. And if you can't make it out tomorrow, we hope that you can. Where's a good place for folks to get more preparedness tips, more information on your office? Where should they visit? Well, first of all, again, let me reiterate our Facebook page. Facebook. <laughs> uh, we put a lot of tips on Facebook and we put a lot of information out on Facebook and we would love for folks to see our page and like us. There's also an emergency management page on the county website. Um, in addition, if you want information on being prepared in your own home, a great place to go is ready.gov. Ready.gov. Um, it's a great, uh, great website with lots of information. Um, but just a couple of quick tips, if we have a second, would sure. be number one, to be prepared in your own home, which means to have something called a go kit. And a go kit has food, some foods and some medicine, maybe some snacks, anything that is really important to you that if you have to leave your home, it's in a bag or in a case or whatever, and it's assembled and ready to go with you if you have to leave on a moment's notice. Um, another thing is personal preparedness around the home and doing things like having an exit drill in the home and doing things like um, having a communications plan. And what I mean by that is if in the middle of the night there's a big storm or if there's a fire in your home and you have to leave in the middle of the night, you might say well, that we're going to meet out the big oak tree in front of the home. Just something as simple as that where you share a point where you're going to meet where everybody knows to go and assemble so that we can find each other. The last thing that we want families doing is running off in the middle of the night, particularly looking for other family members. Uh, that, that creates even bigger problems. 
So that's a couple of kind of personal preparedness things. If we have folks in the county who are interested in volunteering or doing even more work um, in the preparedness field, uh, we do have a community emergency response team. Uh, the fire department has a volunteer program. I even believe that the police department has a volunteer program. So there's lots of opportunities for folks to pay back to their community if they'd like to do that. Great info. Thank you so much for coming on today and sharing this all with us. And you out there, we hope you've learned something today. Kevin Aftung with the Office of Emergency Management. We'll be right back with more Week in Review right after this. Don't go anywhere. Get up, I know you found a way. Head up. Look through those clouds of gray. Now it's our turn. Go to ourturntohelp.org and donate what you can. Hope is on the way. Welcome back. Well, everybody who watches this show knows that my favorite event of the year is the county fair. Yay! Oh, you're the tiaras. Ooh, but mostly because it's where I get to bond with my friend, my buddy, Samson the Camel. You love your Samson. And his brother Eli. I love them. Oh, I, no, I, I love I can, Samson more. I can see I it do. now. I do. Next week, we'll be taping the show on location at the fair, but our own Pat Daly has a preview. Pat? Thanks, guys. It's that time of year again, the Anne Arundel County Fair. I'm here with Sharon Gertz, the fair's manager, to talk a little bit about generalities of the fair this year. Thanks for joining us, Sharon. Thank you for having me. Can you please tell us just um, when the fair is uh, and what will be the major attractions be this year? Okay. Well, there's a lot going on. The fair starts Saturday, uh, on Wednesday, September the 14th, runs through Sunday the 18th uh, daily. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we open to the public at 4. Thursday is the Senior Citizens Disabled and Military Day, where they can get in for free from 10 in the morning till 3. Um, and then Saturday and Sunday, we open at 8, close at 11 on Saturday, and close eight to eight, and open and close 8 to 8 on Sunday. Um, the activities, my goodness, there is so much. Even I have to refer back to our schedule because there is so much going on. We'll have singers, dancers everywhere, all kinds of entertainment, bands, magic shows, circus school on Sunday, which is really exciting to see. The hamster balls will be here on Sunday. Also, watermelon eating, pie eating, scarecrow contest. You can come make your own scarecrow. Um, put your face in a pie. See if you can be the winner on that one. It's always fun. Um, we also have some cute things that you can do. Call your man, call your lady contest. That one's fun. It all developed from the hog calling contest, which we still do that too. So uh, we have livestock shows, horse shows, demos. 4-H events, tractor and horse pulls. Um, I just love watching the horse pulls. I love tractor pulls too, but the horses are just so massive and they're so big. It's really cool to watch. The antique sawmill has always been one of my favorites here. That's open the whole time we're open also. And they actually, we actually have a working antique sawmill that was donated by Donnie Gog. And uh, they had the tractor club and he has kept it up ever since they gave it to the fair many years ago. How about the idol contest? I know that's oh, always hot. That was the contest, yes. I'm sorry. The uh, Arundel's Got Talent, uh, the Arundel, um, Anne Arundel Talent Contest, sorry. Um, it is on Thursday night, um, and you can still, if this airs prior to fair, you can still enter. So contact the fair, and, and uh, we can get you up there, and you can sing or dance for us. Great. Also, I think viewers would be interested to know about the evolution of the county fair, when it started, where it was, that kind of thing, how it ended in, Cro to, in Crownsville. Okay, well, let's see. Way back, the year I was born, 1952, the fair started. It started on a farm down not far from Sandy Point State Park. Uh, it moved over the very next year, I believe it was, to Sandy Point State Park, and we spent many years there. Um, and then it was time for the fair to find its own permanent home. And so we acquired the property here through the state. It's a lease, it's not owned by us. And in 1984, we moved here. And our first county fair on its own first grounds was in 1984. And I myself have been here since then also. <laughs> Great. Um, one last thing, how can people get in touch with you guys about any questions they have about the fair? Do you have a website? 
We do. Um, we are a 100% volunteer organization. No one here gets paid for anything. So starting Tuesday, right after the holiday, the phones in the office will be manned all day. And you can certainly call the fair at 410-923-3400-3400. And the website is, is www.aacountyfair.com. Uh, I'm sorry, aacountyfair.org. Great. Well, it's that time of year again. I know that Dave will come out for some, uh, some funnel cake, but, uh, you know, that's something he can always divulge later in the show. <laughs> but thanks for, thanks for being with us, Sharon. Back to you guys. Thanks, Pat. I can't wait to see Sharon and Samson again. Yay! Let's be honest. You can't wait to wear that tiara again. Okay, maybe. Maybe that'll make its way back out. <laughs> and, and some people might not know, we, we wore mascot heads last year. I mean, oh my we really went all out last year. Last I don't know if we can top that. Let's tone it down this year. Yeah, those, those heads were hot. I want to be on the midway. Let's tip on the midway. All right, maybe. That'd be fun. We'll talk to Or Chuck. if we can get a ride going. Pretzels? Yeah. We never get food. We never do. Because we, never, it's we never tape open. it just before the, the fair actually begins. Yeah, because so we don't want to be in anyone's way. Right. So. And the lizards and the camels and the yeah. donkeys and everybody, we don't want to be in their way. We don't want to mess with anybody. But we'll so, find a cool place to. So how was your Labor Day? Tell me about your Labor Day. Other than going to the boatyard, did you, you know, you have a nice weekend? Yeah, we kept going back and forth about getting in a Dodge and going somewhere. But everything was so expensive. And hmm. um, then, of course, the weather, we were kind of a little anxious about whether or not if we were the weather was the bridge. perfect on Sunday. It, Monday was hot. Yeah, but I mean, with the storms, Friday oh, and yeah. Saturday, if you were over the bridge, they were really having a lot of issues. I had friends down in Rehoboth that said it was a lot of rain. Yep. So I'm kind of glad I didn't go anywhere. Save, well, I tried to save money. I ended up going shopping because the people had Labor Day sales. It happens. So, but at least I didn't, I didn't have like money blown on a hotel. Are you one of those people who comes home from shopping and you go, Guess what? I saved three hundred dollars. Yes. Yeah, right. I love a good deal. How much deal. did you spend? I love a good deal. I'm sorry, but I got cute fall boots and my cute fall hat, so I'm ready for fall, Dave. Wow. Um, good how for was you. Boston? Boston was amazing. Uh, so much we cannot cover it all in this show, but just some of the highlights. I got to sit on the Green Monster. Oh, cool. And Big Poppy hit a home run. Have you heard the new commercial with Big Poppy? Yes, I like I it. it. Big Poppy Yay. is. And I'll tell you what, he is he is over 40 years old, which in sports is just crazy un, unheard of. And every time he got up to bat, they had a Everyone conference at the nice. pitcher mound, and the crowd was going crazy, and he delivered several times when I He's was there. Awesome. Now, a lot of people want me to go back because I went to two games at Fenway, and the Red Sox lost both games. Oh. So the Orioles could use a little bit of that mojo for yeah. me to go back. Yeah. But you're going to have to send me on the road. You know, it might get kind of expensive. So it yeah. depends on how much it's I'll worth have to go, too, and we'll just take the show. So real quick, um, I did a lot of history stuff, which was fun. Okay. I learned that um, Sam Adams beer, that's not Sam Adams on the beer. That's Paul Revere. What the heck? Yeah, cause, because they thought Paul Revere was more attractive than that's Sam horrible. Adams. I know, poor Sam Adams. And it was funny because I did the Freedom Trail tour, and it's you know a lot about the revolution and about the Constitution and things like that. And the docent was very funny because everything came back to Paul Revere. I mean, the, the things this guy gets credit for in yeah. history, he doesn't deserve all of them. Here's the best one. He didn't finish that ride. When he was riding, saying the British are coming, the British are coming, which he didn't say the British are coming because that would have been like everybody who lived there was a British subject. So he wouldn't have said the Br Apparently he said the regulars are coming. That's what they called the British Army, the regulars. Anyway, I feel like he didn't even to finish the, the ride. The boys. I, I know. Yeah. And, and this guy named uh, Beckett, Actually did the ride, got to Concord, which is Concord, you know, Concord. Concord, something like that. He got there and warned, you know, the the revolutionary forces, and they were able to, you know, stash their ammunitions, and you know, it could have been the end right there if he didn't make the ride. But Paul Revere got all the credit, all and this credit. guy died in an unmarked grave with no accolades oh my whatsoever. Gosh. Did you get some chowder? You know what? I didn't have chowder. You didn't have chowder. I did not. Any I kind not. of sea, like lobster or anything? Oh yeah, I had right. I had plenty of. I didn't have any lobster either. But um, 
so many it's a great town and yeah, I, really, I want to go check it out it, it, it was a great time the weather was perfect there was one rainy day when i was in cape cod so i missed one beach day Aww. and of course i was all cranky about that because i got all spoiled that i had like perfect weather but i highly recommend it if you haven't been to boston check, to check it, out. it out it's a yeah. great town a lot of history there i started reading uh, 1776 by David McCullough. So I'm it's a real musical. George Washington fan. I mean, I just, perhaps I've brought this up before, but why do we not have an epic movie about George Washington? The guy was a rock star. Well, maybe if he was a vampire hunter like Lincoln. You ever heard of Bo Jackson? Yes. Okay, George Washington is like Bo Jackson. There are stories about things he did that you just don't believe are true. With Bo Jackson, people actually witness these things and they're true stories. Now, we're not sure this is true about Washington, but there was a story that was recounted in the book, and David McCullough is a very respected historian, so we got to think it's almost true. So there was mutinies were going on in the Revolutionary War. They were, they were out of food. They were out of powder. They were, it was, the people were sick and dying and all that stuff. And there was a mutiny, and then shortly following that, this fight breaks out, and it's like a thousand guys in the revolutionary forces just fighting each other, just fist fight, right? And Washington appears on his horse, you know, up on the comes up on the hill, surveys what's going on, just trots down on his horse right into the middle of the melee, gets off his horse, grabs the two biggest guys, one in each hand, lifts them up like this, and shakes them until everybody stops fighting. Wow. I mean, who is this guy? George Washington. He's George Washington. Come it's on. amazing. Well, I'm glad that you had a great trip. It, it was great. And, and real I'm quick, I'll tell you, great, I shook things weekend. up. I had my first fantasy football draft experience. No way. A fantasy draft party. Will let me pick his, his third round, and I picked Tucker because. You picked a kicker? I picked kicker because In it's Justin round? Tucker, and I wanted him, and I shook things up. Everyone started scrambling. Should we pick specials now? Should we do this? Should we do that? I, I messed things up. Ooh, I don't know. I, don't I know. think it'll work out for I us. I don't know if you're going to get asked back after that. I think, I, but, I think it'll work but, out for us. But guess what? What? Justin Tucker's on my fantasy football team, too. Boom. What's up? Whammy. I got a couple Ravens. I got Mike Wallace, and I got Terrence West up there. from the Towson Ooh. Tigers. Yeah, Towson. He is a dark horse to actually maybe start at running back for the Ravens. So Very fingers cool. crossed. Fingers crossed. I got some Ravens on my team. All right. I may have some Redskins, too. But anyway. That wraps up this week's edition of Week in Review. You can watch this episode and archive episodes online anytime on Facebook or YouTube by simply searching Arundel TV. Please tune in again next week for more highlights and news from around the county, and we'll see you next time.